Hey guys, welcome to another DaVinci Resolve 17 editing tutorial and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to export your videos and more importantly how to get the best render settings for your videos. If you're new to my channel don't forget to hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell to stay notified for my next uploads and also follow my social media accounts to stay up to date with some awesome behind the scenes content. Alright, so let's open up DaVinci Resolve and open up a completed project that we want to render. Okay, so I've opened up DaVinci Resolve 17 and I've got my project here ready to export. Now, there are two different ways you can export videos inside of DaVinci Resolve. The first way to export a video is to go over to the top here and go over to File and we go down to Quick Export. Now, this is really good for if you are new to DaVinci Resolve and you've got um, these Quick Exports so you can go in there and choose whatever you want. So at the top here, we've got H.264, H.265, YouTube, Vimeo, and Twitter. Now YouTube, Vimeo, and Twitter, these are just some good settings for these platforms. And you can also go into your preferences at the top here and sign in directly to YouTube so you can upload straight to YouTube. Now I haven't signed in on here to do that, so I haven't really played around with it. I generally go for H.264 and H.265. Now H.265 unfortunately isn't in the free version of DaVinci Resolve, so you will need the studio version to export H.265. Under these options, you will see your timeline settings. So you'll see your resolution, the duration, uh, the frame rate, and H.264. I would recommend if you are doing a quick export, don't have um, excess clips here. Make sure that all the clips that you want in your timeline is there ready to export and there's no trimmed clips just thrown to the end of the timeline because I tend to do that sometimes when I edit. So once you've chosen the setting that you want, you just hit export and save it to wherever you want and then just export it. And then you'll see quick export timeline one. I haven't named the timeline, so that's why it's timeline one. And then you can see that it's rendering. So the second way to render your video clip is to just simply go down to these tabs at the bottom here and we're going to go to the deliver tab. Okay, so we've opened up the delivery tab. So one of the differences between doing the quick export and going into the delivery tab, if you go to the delivery tab, if you've got a few bits of clips, B-roll, a bit of an interview that you weren't going to use but you just wanted to have it there anyway, um, you can actually choose which part of the timeline you want to render by just clicking and dragging this marker. So just quickly going over the settings inside the deliver tab is you've got your render settings over here. Over here, you've got your render queue and then you've got your timeline here. So our main focus is going to be in the render settings. So we've got pretty much the same sort of settings as the quick export. We've got our YouTube, we've got Vimeo, Twitter. Uh, we've got H.264, H.265. Now, I would recommend if you are creating a YouTube video or a Vimeo, you can get away with just clicking these options, but I prefer to go into custom. So what I like to do is I like to choose my location and give it a name. I'll call this render test. I'm just gonna make sure that the render is, uh, is selected to single clip, just because we're not going to be rendering each of these clips separately which is what individual clips will do. And you'll know that it's in individual clips when it's a yellow marker here instead of gray. So we want one single clip for this export and we wanna make sure that export video is on. And I like to go into audio and click export audio as well because I've had issues in the past where I go to render a video clip and it was just the video only and there was no audio and I've mixed and mastered and added music into it. And um, yeah, unfortunately, I had to go back and re-render. So, okay, so let's go and choose our formats and codecs. So a lot of people tend to go over to QuickTime. Um, I prefer MP4. Uh, the reason why I choose MP4 for my rendering is just because it's like a universal codec and I find a lot of software that plays videos back on PCs and Macs can play MP4 really smoothly and I've had trouble in the past with QuickTime. They're basically the same sort of quality. They're both lossy codecs and formats. So it doesn't really matter which one you choose. 
but um, I'm, I prefer to choose MP4 just because it's much easier to play back on different machines. Um, and then codec, you've basically only got two options underneath MP4, you've got H.264 and H.265. If you're using the free version of Resolve, you may not see H.265 as an option. Um, if that's the case, H.264 is fine. Now the difference between the two, I find that I prefer H.265 because pretty much just the file size. So H.265 is a smaller file size and some testing that I've done in the past, I found that there is no quality difference. They're pretty much the exact same quality. At the best render settings for H.264 and at the best render and at the best render settings for H.265, they're pretty much equal, but H.265 is much smaller and easier to manage and quicker to upload if you're uploading to social media. So I'm just gonna choose H.265. Now with resolution, you wanna keep it to your footage resolution. So I shot most of the footage here with an anamorphic lens. So it is at a 2.41 aspect ratio if we wanna get technical. So um, you can go in and change the resolution, but most of your footage will be 1920 by 1080. So um, I'll probably leave it at that. My frame rate, I shot these clips at 25 frames and the timeline set to 25 frames. So you wanna make sure that your frame rate is matching your timeline frame rate as well. Um, and then quality, I like to go to automatic and best because I find that does a really good job at keeping the quality and also having the file size manageable as well. It's almost like it finds the best way to get the best quality and the best sort of file size at the same time. So that's why I choose best. And then, yeah, I'll leave the advanced settings and all of that. And then you hit to add to render queue. Now that doesn't actually render your video clip. What that does is it sends it over to your render queue. And this is where you can get experimental if you're not sure what sort of um, codec you want to be using or if there's different sort of qualities that you need you can actually put it in the job queue and render it all at the same time so the next codec I want to show you is basically an uncompressed codec this is great for archival if you've got a client video and you need to basically archive it so since I've already added that into the timeline into the render queue sorry I can go to the top here and let's choose another export setting. So I'm gonna call this render test two, and then I'm going to change the format to QuickTime, just because QuickTime has a few more codecs that you can use instead of just H.264 and H.265. And the codec we're going to choose is we can go to DNX HD if we want to. I prefer to use GoPro Cineform, and I'll just leave it at yuv 10 bit and i'm just going to leave this at custom quality best and pretty much leave it at that and what this will do is it'll give you a massive file size but this is great for archival purposes if you want to come back and use it in a future edit instead of getting your compressed um, quality video and you've got like the highest quality so i'm just going to make sure that my audio is good so that's that's good i'll just leave the audio codec at aac um that, that's fine i'm going to go back to video and i'm just going to add to render queue and then now i can select both by holding control and selecting the other one and then now i can render them all and it's pretty much easy as that um, i hope these render setting tips and tricks has helped you export um, your videos so that's how you export your videos inside of DaVinci Resolve 17. Of course, you can go and experiment and see what works with you and what works with your clients and all that sort of stuff. But this is what works for me. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, give this video a thumbs up. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell to stay notified for my next uploads. And I'll see you guys next time.